In this video, we're painting the legendary Gazkill Thracker. The only place this model should be intimidating is the table. So sit back, enjoy the tutorial as I take you through how to paint Gazkill and get him looking great. This is a longer tutorial because it is a really, really good model. So there's going to be a few more paints involved as well. Anyway, let's get going. Let's get cracking with Gazgo then. So you can see here, I've just made it all into some sub-assemblies. Now you can leave the arms off if you want. I kind of left them on because it was just easier that way. So what I've done is I've sprayed everything black to start. Uh, we've got the head separate there. We've got the backpack with the skull on. We've got the jaw there. And then we've got uh, Gazgo himself. So this was sprayed black and then sprayed with lead belcher. So what we'll do is we'll make a start with the metallics. And we're going to do all the metallics on Gazgul this way. Because it's a pretty easy way of doing things. The colour I'm going to use is uh, Balthazar Gold. So we've already got the silver down. If you need to put silver on any other parts then just use a little bit of lead belcher. To, to base them and then pop the Balthazar gold on those other areas. So pretty straightforward in terms of what we're going to do. We're just going to look on the backpack and we're going to find those bits where a little bit of colour differentiation will work for us. So we've got this exhaust cover there. Nice and simple. And all you're doing just go around the round the model and find anywhere that you think will benefit from having a bit of a different colour. So you see there, it covers on nice and easily. That's just one coat of Balthazar Gold. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go all the way around the backpack and I'm going to do all the metallic. So I'm going to paint up all the silver bits and all the other parts with lead belcher and I'm going to pop some Balthazar Gold on those bits where I think uh, we could do with a, a different colour. And then we'll come back and uh, we'll have a look at shading it down. Once all the metallics are done, just like that, we're going to shade them down. We're going to cover all the metallics with uh, null oil. So I'm just using a wash brush here. Um, I'm just going to get this null oil all over uh, the metal bits. So you can see there, I'm not being uh, particularly careful. I'm just throwing it all over. So do this all over the metal bits, everything that you've painted silver and everything that you've painted gold, and then make sure it's really dry, and then we'll come back and we'll give it a we'll give it a second shade to really help uh, dull everything down. Once that null oil is dry, and make sure it is dry, we're going to do exactly the same thing with some Agrax Earth shade. So the reason doing this is it just gives that hint of brown to the silver. Um, because, let's face it, the Orcs, even Gazgirl, is not the cleanest of chaps. So, we just want to move this Agrax Earth Shade all over the silver metallics, uh, covering exactly the same pieces that we, we did before. So, make sure to do it on all the silver, not just the bits on the backpack, but also the bits on the, uh, the main body of Gazgirl as well. And then once that's done, We'll come back and we'll have a look at doing a, our first highlight. Once you're sure that uh, that Agrax Earth Shade is dry, just take some Necron Compound and just brush that over all of the metallics. And what you'll see there, it'll start to pick up on the edges and just start to brighten some of that silver. So just work your way around the model. So that's the backpack. You know we've got the the claws as well. I'm using a makeup brush for this, which is nice and soft and gives you that. You can see it's picking up quite nicely there. Um, I'll put a link to the, in the description for the makeup brush I use. They're quite cheap, uh, and I find them better than traditional dry brushes. Um, 
mainly because they're softer um, and I just find they're, they're more effective. So once you've dry brushed all the metal, if you want to make it shinier, then go back in with uh, something like Chrome from Vallejo Model A. Um, otherwise, uh, that's most of the metal complete. We'll just add some verdigris next and then we'll move on to the black armour. Verdigris is nice and simple. You just need some nylac oxide and you just want to pop it into some of these recesses just like that. Just run your finger across there and you'll see it just stays in the the recess around some of the studs in there as well where you've got some indentations it will form and also in the pipes here. Just take your time and pop it into the the gap there and that's uh, a really nice effect. If you want to make it a bit more intense you can do just pop some more nylac oxide in there uh, but I'm quite happy with how that looks on there. I'm going to have a look at some of the other metallics as well. But I'm pretty happy with that. So we'll come back uh, in a little bit and see how it looks. I think we'll do the black armour next. First stage of the black armour is pretty straightforward. And what we want to do is just uh, take some of bad and black, water it down. And just paint over all the, the black armour panels. And there's quite a few on there. Um, so just go quite quickly, just be careful not to go over anything that you've already uh, finished. So I don't need to show you too much of this. I'm just going to finish this shoulder pad. You can see it's fairly fairly thin there going on. So get that done, over all the armour panels are going to be black and then we'll come back and we'll start the highlighting. Once you've got all that black reinstated we'll highlight it up and the first colour we're going to use is Dark Reaper and what you want to do is where you can is use the shape of the model to just draw the brush along the edge like that and then where you've got the kind of rivets etc you can just pop it over. Now this is quite a rough first highlight because we'll go in and refine it with a with a different colour next, but this just gives us a kind of rough idea of how that black highlight is going to look. So, work your way all the way around the model, picking up all the kind of the rough edges of the armour. If you're not sure, just follow the box art because we're aiming to kind of replicate the box art with this model, and then we'll come back and we'll refine it a little bit more uh, in the next step. Everything should be popping out a little bit now. Uh, so what we want to do is we just want to sharpen some of these highlights. And the colour we're going to use for that is Thunderhawk Blue. And essentially we're going to try and do the same kind of thing again where we follow the shape of the model where we can. But what we really want to do now is we want to make sure that the, uh, the paint kind of goes inside where we painted that Dark Reaper. You need a good point on your brush for this and you just want to take your time because this is the bit that's really going to kind of make the the big difference on the model so enjoy the process of highlighting it can take a bit of time but actually the results are really worth it so go around where you can use the shape of the model use it where you can't don't worry too much just work on your brush skills and have a bit of faith in yourself as a painter you see there it's really starting to pop out a little better now. So I'm going to work all the way around this armour, doing exactly the same thing. And then we'll come back and we'll have a look at how it looks. The last little bit of a highlight we want to give the black armour is just a little bit of Fenrisian grey. This is just kind of on the sharpest part, so where you've got the kind of chinks right on the, the, the tips. Just kind of like the shiniest part. And you just want to work your way around and use this fairly sparingly because what this will do will kind of brighten up the the armor quite a bit, which you don't really want to do. You want to keep the kind of blackness on it. You just want to get those uh, light points on the corners. 
So take your time and work your way around the model. This is this is one of the fun parts. So enjoy it because this is what makes your your kind of your model come to life and, and really jump out. So work your way around, and we'll come back and we'll have a little look. We'll do a little bit of shading on the black just to make it look a little bit dirtier. That's the armour complete, and it's looking pretty good. So what we're going to do now is just take some Rhinox Hide and water it down a little bit. And what we're going to do is we're going to look to paint this into all the gaps that we've got in the armour, just like that. All the gouges. And what you'll find as you work your way around and paint around the, kind of the metallic bits as well, run it in there it'll just darken or brown up these areas and just look like there's dirt in there which uh, again will just add to the old uh, story that the, the orcs they don't necessarily care how clean their gear is they just care that it works so I'm going to work my way around all the black armor now I'm going to pop in this rhinox hide I over spill like that, just wipe it with your finger and it'll come off. Okay, so I'm working my way around the rest of the model with this Rhinox hide and then we'll come back and we'll look at adding in uh, maybe some little bits of rust. Once that Rhinox hide is down, we can add a little bit of rust into it, uh, not too much now. What we're going to do is we're going to heavily water down some scrag brown. Make sure you don't get too much in your brush and you can just pop some of that into some of these. Uh, recesses to, to make it look like there's a little bit of rust running through there and this just kind of goes really nicely with the rest of the model and that Rhinox hide that's kind of already sitting in there just to add a lot more interest which, which really does help the model and kind of give off the battered armour effect because even though I'm sure Gazkill's uh, mechs would be looking after his armour he's out crumping all the time so it's uh it's not always going to be pristine and for example where you've got like a bead there you can run the brush over that clean it off make sure there's no paint on it and then just run it back over the top and then that once that dries that'll dry really nicely a really nice rust effect uh, around that so just work your way around the model, pop the rust in where you want, and that's the armour done, we'll do the skin next. Okay, so one of the reasons I kept the head separate is it's easier to show you how to paint it, but it's also a little bit easier um, in light of the whole thing. So what we want to do is we just want to paint all the skin. Uh, I'm doing this with Death World Forest as a base, so you can see there it's going on, but it's probably going to need a couple of coats. So just be careful. Going around bits you've already finished, and around the, uh, the mouth. So just a couple of coats, Death Will Forest, and we'll come back and we'll uh, we'll start to highlight it up. Next up, we're going to take some Elysian Green, and we're going to highlight the skin. So you're looking for the most raised areas. We just want to leave the Death World Forest in the recesses. It's nice and simple, nice and straightforward. Take your time, follow the, the lines that you can see on the model. Just remember, when you get down to this part here, that's kind of going to be in the dark anyway. So then we've got the kind of muscly sinews across the back. And then the kind of the neck as well. So just work your way around. You may need to use two coats in some places. Um, up to you, depending on if it's the way you like it or not. So get that done and then come back and we'll just go for a little bit more of a sharp highlight. So the sharpest highlight we're going for is a little bit of Nurgling Green. And we're looking, get a good point on your brush. Just looking for the sharpest parts. So where you've got the shape of the model there, like along the ear, you can use that. And then where you haven't got it sort of along the mouth, just take your time 
and pop that on there and you can see that's really helping uh, the face to pop out. Okay, so I'm happy with that for the skin. Um, what I'll do now is we'll move on and we'll have a look at uh, doing all the other elements such as the, the gums and the teeth. Uh, just to make sure that we've uh, got that all done and we can pop him into the rest of the model. Next up, we just want to add a little bit of uh, life and luminescence to the face. So just take some Kislev flesh. And what we're going to do is thin it down with some water. And we're just going to paint it over those the end of those ears. Just like that. And then as it dries, it'll just kind of... Just on the inside, not the outside. And the same for the, the lips here. And all I'm doing, I'm just following it round... Uh, the shape of the model, I'm not actually doing too much work just on there, and that just gives you that extra kind of level of luminescence on there. Okay, so we'll do the gums and the tongue next, uh, and then we'll uh, get onto the teeth. Gums, we're trying to get a little bit of scream of pink, and all we're doing, you can see that where the gum is on the model, we just want to follow along and colour it in. Now just be really careful you don't go over anything you've already finished such as the green or that uh, Kislev flesh. Just work those gums around. And then there we are. Don't worry too much about the teeth because we'll go in and uh, tidy them up next. Uh, but you want to put this on the on the tongue as well. It's kind of in there hiding. So just take your time with this. You might have to Go at a jaunty angle. There we are. Job done. So I'll do the teeth next. So for the teeth, I'm going to base coat them with Zandri dust. Uh, and this is really easy, straightforward. Just being careful not to go uh, over anything you've already finished. Now, what I'm also going to do with this Zandri dust is anywhere else on the model where there's bone. So we've got the skull on the helmet. Uh, we've got the two horns coming out of uh, Gazgill's, I suppose this is his neck, head area. Uh, we're going to get those covered in Zandri dust as well, so go ahead and finish those. Now it may take two thin coats, but that's the, the nature of the beast as it were. And then we'll come back and we'll uh, we'll highlight these teeth up. When that Zandri dust is dry, I just want to put a little bit of Agrax Earthshade over all the, the bone. So you've got the teeth here. Uh, we want to put it all over the bone on, uh, on Gazgul as well. So... Uh, for example, we've got the horns here, we want to get them covered as well. But what we don't want to do, we do want to be careful, we don't want to get this to pool too much. So just keep it moving round. Let's settle in the recesses on these horns and around the bottom. And then let it be. So we don't want to put too much on at once. Uh, but of course all the bone we do want to get covered with the Agrax Earthshade. So work your way round all the bits you've just done and then we'll come back. Uh, we'll start to highlight uh, a little bit. So we'll go back to the face for a little bit. So once the um, Agrax Earth shade is dry, just take some shabdy bone and just highlight uh, the teeth. Now you might want to just follow the the shape of the model again. So this, but there you see, nice and straightforward, easily done. So we'll let that dry. Uh, we'll do the eye and the eye next. So we've got the robotic eye and the normal eye. And the stitches where uh, Mad Doc Grotznik is putting back together. Uh, and then that's the head done. And we'll go back and have a look at the bone on the rest of the model then. So for the eye, just a little bit of white scar. Just on the robotic eye there. See, I've probably got a little bit too much on my brush there. So I don't want to attempt the, the internal eye just yet. So I'm just going to clean my brush off. Get some more white scar on and a good tip. And I'm just going to try and paint that eye there, just like that. So there we are, let that dry and then we'll come back and we'll uh, we'll get them coloured next. So both the eyes, very simple step. Just take some Blood Angels Red Contrast Paint and pop it over uh, the white scar. So you can see now we've got two red eyes. What we want to do is just put a little bit extra 
at the bottom of that there. Let that dry, and then we'll just put a little bit of uh, white scar on the top uh, top corner as a bit of a reflection. And then we'll do the stitches with some of that Zandri dust. And all you're looking to do with that is just paint it over the stitches. Nice and simple. Take your time. Don't get it all over anything you've already finished. Just work your way around. And then with that, the head is done. So we're going to drop back onto the bone uh, parts of the, the torso next. So for the bone on the torso, we just want to take some shabti bone. And for the bone on the horns, what you're trying to do is follow the lines that are modelled on the, the horn like that. Uh, what you'll see then is that you've got the deeper recesses which are kind of moulded into the model that you can kind of look to avoid. So just do that for both horns. You can see I finished it on that one there. Uh, just work that up and then we'll come up with the, another highlight and then we look at how we get a nice transition between uh, the lighter part at the bottom and the darker part at the top. And to really emphasize the lightness on the kind of the lower areas, just take some white scar and then just highlight the lines towards the towards the tip of the horn. Don't worry so much about doing the underneath. Just make sure we do this on both sides. And what this does, it just gives us a gradual highlight for when we uh, we look to darken the horns down in the next step. Okay, nice and straightforward. I will darken them down next. Uh, as for the rest of the bone, you can just kind of take some of that white scar and just highlight the kind of the most prominent edges on the skulls. Bits that are really going to kind of catch the light and reflect it. Um, so with that, I'll finish off off cam these kind of sharp bits here, and then we'll come back and. Uh, and we'll show you how to blend them. First thing we'll do is just take some skeleton hoard contrast paint and just put a, a useful amount on there. That's probably a bit too much, so I'm just going to clean my brush off and just push it all uh, all the way across. And then what we need to do is let that dry. And once that's dry, we'll come back and we'll have a look at darkening the tips. When that skeleton hoard is dry, we're going to apply a second coat from about halfway up the horn, just like that. And then we we'll let that dry. And then what we'll do is when that's dry, we'll apply a little bit more towards the tip, about halfway again, and then finally a little bit on right on the end of the tip. So you'll have about four coats on the end. It'll give it that nice dark colour. Gaz is uh, really starting to come together now, so we'll move on to the trousers next. I'm just going to take some Steel Legion Drab and base coat the trousers. So just take your time with this. Um, and be careful when you come across the bits you've already finished. Just want to base all the trousers with the Steel Legion. May take uh, two coats. Might be lucky and get away with one. But the important thing here is that you take your time and you don't spill it over any of the armour you finished um, or any of the, the kind of skin you can see in the rips there. So do both sides and we'll come back and we'll highlight it. We'll highlight that Steel Legion drab with a little bit of Bane Blade Brown. Uh, all we're doing really is kind of the kind of the raised areas and the areas around where we've got the, the tear. Similarly here on this side, there's not a huge amount to highlight, we just want to pop something on there so that we can uh, differentiate the colour of the trousers there, so a little bit of Bane Blade Brown has done the job. Uh, we'll do those stitches with a bit of white scar off cam and then we'll, we'll come back and I think we'll do the uh, the red parts next. I'm going to base all the red areas with some corn red. So in terms of what we've got red, we've got this panel here on the power claw. I'm going to do the cable in the bit that's not been ripped away um, and obviously on the the jaws as well we've got the, the teeth there which need to be done 
So I'll just show you really quick how to do uh, this with the corn red. And as you can see, as it goes on, it's a lovely, nice, rich red, but it's going to need two coats, maybe three, depending on how thin it is for you. So just get that on, work your way around. Be careful again of anything you've finished already. And then we'll come back uh, once we've got all the, the red bits done. Next up, really simply, just going to wash that red with some null oil. That's just to give us some nice uh, dark shadows and get some really nice contrast uh, going on. Apologies for the uh, scooter rider that's just gone past, pretending that he's uh, got a lot more CCs than he actually has. So yeah, I get all the red you've just painted uh, shaded down and we'll come back and highlight it all next. So we'll start to highlight the red up once that uh, null oil is dry. The colour we're going to use for this is Evil Sun Scarlet, which as you'll see straight away is much brighter than the colour underneath. And that's perfect for what we want, because what we're going to do is we're going to build up this highlight to be quite a bright red at the top and a dark red in the recesses. So what you can do, as ever, is follow the shape uh, of the the model, so of the teeth. That gives you a nice uh, straight edge. Make sure you take on board the uh, areas where the model's damaged from uh, Casgill doing what Casgill does. And then we'll just start to build up the top part of that highlight there just like that on the teeth so there we are you see that's starting to get bright uh, nice and bright make sure we get all around all the red that you did with corn red we just want to go around and make sure it gets this evil sun scarlet highlight and then we'll uh, come back ready for the highlight number two the last okay sharp highlight we'll put on the red is a little bit of fire dragon bright and what we're going to do is just catch that on the the most raised prominent edges just like that so this will make the, the model a little more orange that's okay because it just brightens up that red which one of a thin line of the fire dragon bright just through there just to kind of help the shape and help the eyes see the the sharper areas so when we put the white checks on there it'll brighten this bit up a lot more so just go around the rest of the model and um, just highlight in the red with the, the fire dragon bright like that and then we'll come back and I think after that it'll be time to tackle the biggest part which is probably the checks. So the first check pattern we'll do is on the back of the power claw. So really what we want to do is just kind of space this out fairly evenly and then we just want to draw thin lines. Now I'm using a bad and black for this. And you can probably see that I've thinned it down quite uh, substantially. So they're the vertical ones. The next thing we'll do is we'll go for some horizontal ones. Now you'll need to steady the model. However way you feel comfortable doing this. Just try and keep that uh, distance between the lines even. And try and keep the line as thin as possible. So there we are, we've got that grid drawn on there. So all we need to do now is just colour in the alternate blocks with black. Nice and straightforward. You don't have to be the tidiest person in the world doing this because what you'll find, and if you look at the box art, it's all very scuffed. So because it's all very scuffed, you can go in and put some flecks of the red through there. Um, and that'll just make it look uh, damaged as well, which is a really good effect. 
So what I'm going to do, I'm going to finish off this. I'm probably going to do a second coat on that black because as you can see there, it's quite, it's quite thin. And then when we come back, we'll have a little look at how we blend this down to black as per the box art and also scuffing it a little. In order to scuff this up a little, all you're looking at is just taking some corn red and just dabbing it and stabbing it across some of the squares. And what you're looking for is just little, little dinks. You're not looking for big strokes, just little strokes where it kind of goes in. And the effect's quite subtle. Uh, but it just takes out the uniformity of that and you've got a nice grid left, okay? So go around that, do that as much as you want, and then when we come back, we'll have a look at how we darken that down. Darkening this down is really simple. We're just going to take some null oil, and we're just going to go from about three quarters, and we're just going to pull that down like that. And you can see there that that's working. So let that dry. Now, important thing to think, if you consider gravity, if I go like that, what you'll see is the null noise will start to pull towards the bottom. So if you're happy with that and you're happy with that look, that's great. I'm going to carry on adding null oil until it shades down maybe two or three coats in between every time it dries. So the next thing we'll do is we'll do the white checks. And I'll do them on the jaw um, rather than the shoulder because it's probably going to be easy to show, easier to show you on the jaw. Okay, so for the white checks... We're going to use Corax White for this, and again, you want a good point on your brush. So I'm using a Winsor & Newton uh, Series 7. So what I want to do is I basically want to segment that area there, put a line through there, and then I want to put a line up here following that jawline. So you want this line to be as thin as possible. But you want it to run up into that jawline there. So we're going to do the same on the other side, but I'm just going to show you on, on here for now. So essentially what you then need to do is just space out with the vertical line down there, down there. And again, you're looking for these checks to be roughly the same sort of size. And you can go back in with the black after if you think, oh, do you know what? I, I just kind of done like a little mistake there, but that's fine. So we've got the shapes established. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to fill it in using our Corax white. So take your time doing this. If you do make any mistakes, you have got the a bad and black to fall back on and you can see there that I'm going to need uh, a couple of coats of the Corax white just to make it make it work properly and that's okay so do this side get that done then do the other side and then the white checks are done uh, and the models coming together quite nicely there's only a few bits and bobs left to do on Gazco so there you can see with the Corax white all the squares I've gone back through them and I've it's got nicked them with little bits of black paint and that's given me a really nice checkerboard effect and kind of damage checkers which fits the aesthetic quite nicely I think. So the, on to the last few bits and pieces now. So the first thing I'm going to do is just these glyphs. So we need to get some white on there. I've already started there. So it's a little bit of Corax white. And you will need two or three coats of Corax white on here but that's easy enough. And what we're doing is following the shape of the model so we're not worrying too much about the edges we'll just make sure we got those uh, in there so go around the model any glyphs you find get them covered up like that uh, then we'll come back and highlight those we want to shade those white glyphs a little and we're going to use agrax as a shade for that because we want a bit of a dirty color on them and th that'll sit quite nicely i think so just pop the Agrax Earth shade on like that, nice and simple. And then let that dry, and then uh, we'll come back, um, and then we'll highlight it. Highlight for the glyphs is uh, a little bit of white scar. Make sure you haven't got too much on your brush. And then you just want to move it along the, the outside like that. Catch the inside of the, the eye. 
and then just on the nose there and work that round. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to do the straps next and as I was thinking about doing the straps I realised I haven't actually painted the, the loincloth going down there but that, that'll be painted exactly the same way uh, that I painted the the claws so with corn red, Nell Noil wash, Evil Sun Scarlet, and then some Fire Dragon Bright just to highlight it. Okay, so I'm going to do that off cam now, and then the last thing we're going to do together is all the kind of little leather straps. And Gaskell is done, and he's ready to kill some Uris. For all the little bits of cord, such as the thing that holds the the skull on here, I'm just going to use some Rhinox hide. Nice and easy. We want to work our way around the model and check that we've actually got all of the the bits we need. Got this little bit along here which we can paint in. And there's going to be lots of different bits all across the back of the model, across the backpack. So go and find them, give them a base coat of Rhinox hide, and we'll come back and uh, highlight that up next. To highlight all those bits of cord. A little bit of scrag brown and just run it along the kind of topmost edge so that it just picks up the paint as you move through. So do that over all the bits you've just done Rhinox hide and then we've just got a little bit of yellow to do and uh, Gazgul is pretty much done. On the box art Gazgul's got some uh, yellow on his grenades so I'm just gonna really quickly use some Avalanche Sunset just to base these. Now you can see it goes on okay but it's going to need probably two coats uh, just to get up to what we want. So I'm going to get that done off cam and then I'm going to wash it with uh, a Grax Earth Shade. So I'll do that off cam as well and then we'll come back and highlight it. So there we have it. Gaskell is done and he's ready for the table. Just to finish off, I've made sure the base matches the rest of the army and I've popped some shafty bone on those grenades. I really hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please leave a like and a comment down below. It really does help me improve the quality of content that I do for you guys. Don't forget, you can see all my recommended equipment in the description and you can also get up to 20% off all your Warhammer from Goblin Gaming. That includes the new Prophecy of the Wolf box if you're in the UK or the EU. Thanks again for watching, I'll see you next time.